Hello, my friends. This is Bishop Campbell welcoming you again to a short meditation on the theme of living the Catholic life. This coming Sunday, we will be celebrating Passion Sunday or Palm Sunday. It is the beginning of the most important seven days within our church's calendar and within the lives of Catholics. I remember uh, as a young lad uh, being trained as a chorister. I must have been maybe nine or ten at the time when it was announced that the Holy Father, Pope uh, Pius XII, had restored the Holy Week services and ceremonies. In uh, This is the mid-50s. Might as well give you away my age. But uh, it was an extraordinary event for the entire church. Because uh, as a young child, when I remembered Holy Week, I remember that on Holy Thursday, there was the hour of adoration before the reserved sacrament. Good Friday meant the stations of the cross. Holy Saturday was the blessing of the Easter food with the newly blessed holy water. And of course, Easter was Easter. Which is profoundly thing. I had no idea that there were other ceremonies going on because uh, they were not very well known. Uh, sometimes they were done very early in the morning. There was a rule uh, back before uh, the mid 50s that all masses and all services had to be said before 12 noon. And so here we had an occasion where on Holy Thursday the Mass was in the evening, the Mass of the Lord's Supper, and in order that the largest number of people could uh, attend and also receive Holy Communion, the Eucharistic fast was changed from midnight to the time of reception to three hours before the reception of Holy Communion. And those ceremonies, and since I was trained as a chorister, we learned all of the antiphons, Gregorian chants, and whatnot. It was an extraordinary experience. And uh, culminating, well, beginning with the uh, Mass of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday evening, uh, the uh, Liturgy of the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, which normally was uh, at 12, between 12 and 3. Then the, the Great Easter Vigil, which I remember... It was originally, uh, it used to be called the Easter Midnight Mass. But it, it began at 11 and ended around 1.30 uh, the next morning. It was a vigil that we had. And these, these memories remain very powerful. But I also remember something less happy, that two years ago, because of the epidemic, we practically lost Easter and the Holy Week services. And this made me appreciate these events all the more because this was the first time since 1955 that I had not participated in the Paschal Triduum. Oh, we were permitted to say an individual Mass for Holy uh, Thursday, but that was practically it. And then it was Easter Sunday. I also remember as a young lad some experiences I had in celebrating Holy Week that always stuck in my mind. I was always aware of the connection of Holy Week with the promise of spring. I think this is probably because my father and mother were avid gardeners. And I, I remember uh, sometimes going out to uh, to church, to the service, to make a visit to the Blessed Sacrament, of smelling the soil, just waiting to receive the seed. Although I also remember once going up to my uncle's farm and realizing how pungent the soil of a farm can be before it receives the the seed. But it was the brilliance of the newest flowers, especially we looked for the dogwood which would be blossoming in the depths of of the woods before the leaves had returned. And that the brilliant white flower always had a great sense of hope. And it was something deep in the woods. 
and we looked for it and looked for it. It was like uh, the women coming to the tomb on Easter Sunday and uh, looking for it. And, of course, they turn, and there's Jesus Christ. Now, obviously, I'm using this as a very weak metaphor, but finding the dogwood always reminded me of those Holy Week experiences. And, of course, there's always that very simple joy of being out of doors without a heavy coat. And I suppose experiencing the joy of Easter is experience the joy of not being burdened by sin, that it is forgiven, it can be tossed away. It is not that heavy thing we drag along with us. And I think of that Jesus' parable from the Gospel of John, in which he says that unless the seed falls to the ground and dies, it remains simply a seed. But if it falls and dies into the soil, it produces much fruit. And in Holy Week, I, I think we have this chance to plant the seed of our lives deep into the rich soil of Jesus Christ. And in order to do this, I think we have to participate as fully as possible in the heart of our Catholic faith, which is the celebration of the Paschal Mystery, which is the root of all worship, moral life, and Christian service for faithful Catholics that paschal mystery of the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. This paschal mystery is the completion of salvation history. It is the ultimate revelation of God's life and the purpose for all humans. And if we are not only to think about the meaning of that uh, ultimate revelation, we must also realize that to receive the promises of God's saving gift to us, we might part, uh, must participate in this suffering, dying, and rising of Jesus Christ. For that paschal mystery is what shapes every Christian life. Now remember, my dear friends, that the events celebrated every year during Holy Week are not simply the calling to mind of certain historical events but it is the actual participation of the faithful in these saving events made present through the power of the Holy Spirit. In a real sense, we are present with Jesus and the apostles in the upper room for the Last Supper. We are actually standing with Mary, Mary Magdalene, and John at Calvary. We are there on Holy Saturday, realizing a sense of emptiness and waiting. And we join the women as they rush to the tomb, finding it empty, turned away from that darkness, from that emptiness, to the presence of the Lord Jesus who is there. And this participation in the Holy Week services can be a life-changing experience. We are going to be reminded of who we are, how we are meant to live, and what awaits the faithful after our earthly existence is completed. It will also remind us, as well, of our mission in this world, to proclaim the power and love of God through Jesus Christ, to announce his resurrection and the promise of life everlasting. 